Welcome to Pentecostal Preaching Channel. Please subscribe to the channel if you enjoy what you see. Hit the bell to be notified when something new is uploaded. Have a great day. To be in the house of the Lord this week. Week uh, last Sunday, I think it was. We, my family and I were sick. The Wednesday before that, we were sick. The Sunday before that, we were sick, but we were also out of town. <laughs> so... Yes. Amen. Seems like this is the uh, this is the year of sickness. <laughs> Seems like it's just going from one place to another. But we got to pray. Right. Amen. <laughs> well, um, I am your speaker for today. I want to say uh, I want to give thanks to our pastor for allowing. Um, us young, especially us younger ministers, to have an opportunity to um, kind of stretch some spiritual muscles that we're not really maybe too familiar with using because we're just getting started in our in uh, trying to serve the Lord, calling, feeling a call to preaching. So I do want to say thank you to our pastor for this opportunity. Um, anybody remember what what the series is? Renew. Two points for the voice that I can't find the source of. <laughs> Amen. The, the series we are doing is Renew. We talked about renewing your mind. Talked about, um, talked about a lot of different areas we can re re be renewed in. But today, um, it's kind of, kind of uh, close to my heart. So, uh, But before we go into the 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 actual title um i i have to uh i have to say i do uh i i'm kind of privileged to speak on this sunday because we hear a lot about the cardinals around here unfortunately we don't hear a lot about the rams <laughs> but i am more of a football guy than a baseball guy so if there are more football quotes in this lesson than you care to, to listen to, then please forgive me. <laughs> All right. Our scripture, our launch scripture is Lamentations 521. All the scriptures I have here are in the uh, New King James Version, just for um, the ease and, uh, of, of understanding for us. Um, the verse says, turn us back to you, O Lord. And we will be restored. Renew our days as of old. Amen. Amen. And I want to uh, jump to another scripture. More, uh, more specific to what the subject is today regarding um, renewal. It is Isaiah 40, 27. And it says, Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord? And my just claim is passed over by my God. Anybody ever felt like that? God, I'm doing the right thing. Where are you? Do you even know where I'm at? Next verse says, Have you not known, have you not heard the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary? And I believe I misspelled neither nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. Verse 29, he gives power to the weak and to those who have no might, he increases strength. Amen. Verse 30, even the youth shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall. Verse 31, it's a very famous scripture. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Hallelujah. So today, we're going to be talking about renewing your strength. Amen. Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus, for this day, Father. Thank you for your spirit that we already feel in this place, Jesus. I pray, God, speak to us today. Lord, I pray let us be renewed in our strength through your spirit today, Jesus. I pray let your word be delivered with liberty and power today, Jesus. Thank you for this opportunity to be in your presence, God. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So, renewing your strength. Hmm. Well, let's talk about something that's a little bit of the opposite of strength right now. Sickness. <laughs> Seems to be a common topic anyway. I know we've had quite a bit of, any, any, I want to see a show of hands. Anybody been dealing with sickness anytime recently? <laughs> That's almost 100%. Now, I'm not wishing any ill on those that have not partaken of this curse. But um, this has been, I mean, and I said it before, but this has kind of been a year of sickness. I don't remember any year where it went so uh, rampantly through the church, you know. And I mean, it's not just at church, it's at work, it's everywhere. Um, I don't, I don't, not trying to look too much into that. I don't think the, uh, you know, it's a plague or anything like that. But, you know, another thing, I mean, the Patriots going back to the Super Bowl almost makes me sick again. <laughs> uh, you know, sickness. Uh. You know, the annoying part about being sick or getting sick, rather, catching the flu, coming down with a cold. You know, it's not something that you have to actually strive to do. You don't, even have to, you don't even have to put forth any effort to get sick. <laughs> oh, it, it's so annoying. It's just something that happens. You know, if, if you, all you have to do is don't do anything preventative or corrective, and you will probably be sick soon enough. So just uh, in case anybody does want to join the club. Uh, sickness for me this year actually began over Thanksgiving. I was a, a frontierman. What originally happened uh, or appeared like would, would be a relaxing, fun weekend, holiday. You know, a Thanksgiving weekend, everybody's excited. You know, th there's going to be plenty of good food. There's going to be time with family, time off of work. Amen. Um, relaxing week. By Tuesday afternoon, oh boy, <laughs> it was starting to look like a a week of misery ahead, and sure enough, it was. So I had a fever, didn't feel like eating, didn't feel like talking, didn't, I mean, I didn't really feel like doing anything but sleeping, and I, I was, uh, unfortunately, had to miss the Thanksgiving feast. My lovely wife brought some home, though, <laughs> and I was thankful for that, but um, man, it's not fun. I mean, I know there's been some people at the church, they, they had to miss Christmas, uh, had to reschedule time with the family. Um, man, it's not fun. You know, at, at this time, luckily Rachel and Evelyn, they did not contract what I had. Now you, you're saying, well, Brother Sean, you guys were just sick this last week, and that is true, but this was something different. Um, you know, my wife was rampant with the Lysol. <laughs> How many wives can say, when your family is sick, you go Lysol crazy. <laughs> you know, you guys may have heard of the Ghostbusters. My wife is the virus buster. She's got the backpack and everything. No, I'm just playing. But she, she really does go to town. I mean, she is a stickler for it, which it paid off. It paid off. Um, this last weekend, we were a little, like I said, we were a little different, a little different situation. Um, all had a little bit of a sinus infection, not fun. Um, I was the one without the fever this time. <laughs> so I got, I had a, I was the spared one this, this last time, but my wife and my daughter, unfortunately, they both lost their lunch on a couple of occasions. Yeah, I know it's kind of gruesome. The worst part of all, though, was my wife, once again, wasn't out necessarily seeking to get sick, right? It just happened. It just kind of happens, you know. There's, sure, we can take preventative, corrective measures to prevent sickness and illness in the house, but at some point, there's only so much you can do, right? If I've done, Brother Reedy, if I've done all my, all my due diligence, um, I've got my hands washed after everything I've touched, and I've washed everything that has been touched and all that. I'm still not going to be spending too much time around that person because there's something called airborne that we can't do a whole lot about. It's just there. So 
you know, it, it, just, it just happens, boom, you're sick, and Cracker Barrel has never looked more gross in your life than when you're sick. You know, isn't it funny that sometimes that's how life is? Life, you didn't ask for certain things to happen, the kids to get involved in some trouble. You didn't ask for um, a, a career shift suddenly. You didn't ask for heartache that life circumstances seem to have brought around. It's just life. It happens. It happens to all of us. Before you know it, those, those little sudden things that occur have you start feeling a little weaker, not as interested in eating, quote, unquote. Your faith feels a little thin. Your joy feels depleted. Peace seems like a distant dream. And where is God in the middle of all this? Where are you, Lord? Hmm. Well, there was a Hall of Fame college football coach, Lou Holtz, once said, life is 10% what happens to you and 90% how you respond to it. Perhaps God wants you to make the first move. And you may be saying, well, Brother Sean, I've been doing my, you know, I've been, been doing my prayer every day. I've been reading my Bible every day. And I've been doing all the tasks that I'm supposed to do. But maybe God's trying to get you beyond the tasks. Right? Where are you going to turn to when you need strength? Where are you going to turn to when, when things aren't going like we want it to go and the prayers seem to be hitting the ceiling? Is, it, is there a plan B? Vince Lombardi said, for all you that don't know, Super Bowl trophy is named after this coach. He was a coach of the Green Bay Packers. Not a godly man. Not a godly man. But this he got right. The greatest accomplishment is, never, is not never failing or falling, but in rising again after you fall. I want to put a spin on that if I can. Sean Thacker's version. The greatest testimony is not that you were never weak. Not that you never felt depleted or you couldn't go on, but that through Christ, your strength was renewed and enabling you to get up again. That's the greatest testimony. When the devil had me down for the count, it was Jesus Christ that came in, gave me the strength, and picked me up again. Amen? Because we've all been there. We don't like to talk about those moments because they're very dark moments. But we need to share those testimonies. That strength, Brother Bab, there's something that you can share with somebody that may impart strength and hope into their life. Amen. Amen. It's a great testimony. Notice, notice that our subject today is renewing your strength, not building your strength. Notice the distinction. Building your strength, to build strength in the physical realm, People turn to weightlifting. They add more load, right, to build those muscles. But to replenish lost or waning strength, what do people do? They resort back to the basics that first brought health to their bodies. Pretty simple. So we're not talking about necessarily building our spiritual muscles up and becoming, you know, the Incredible Hulk spiritually. We're talking about, God, get me back to that stable place. I feel, I feel, Lord, like I'm, I'm just barely hanging on. Replenish this strength, Lord. Renew my strength, okay? So how, how do we respond correctly to that weariness that life can bring? How, how can we have our strength renewed in Jesus Christ? How do we resolve that humdrum syndrome, right? Well, our text says, they that wait upon the Lord... They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. That's, that's the, that's the uh, prerequisite, is waiting upon the Lord to have your strength renewed. Okay? Now, this, uh, I, I did, a little, did a little searching. Um, did a little uh, looking into the Hebrew word. It's kewa. Q-A-W-A. And this isn't the kind of hope or wait, or, or wait 
that you would wait on an elevator, right? We've all been there. We wait on the elevator like this. I am doing absolutely nothing. (laughs) I don't intend to do nothing while I wait on the elevator, right? That is not the kind of wait that this word implies. Cairo means to hope in, to hope for, wait for, look for. So this isn't the kind of wait you do in an elevator where it's button pushed, wait, do nothing, think about nothing if you're a guy, and then open the door and walk out. Um, This is the kind of wait you do at a stoplight or the kind of wait that a cat does when it's stalking a mouse. You are waiting for the Lord to act. You are looking for, you are hoping in, you are expecting And you are assured that God is going to come. That's where our strength comes. Because the Lord, one, won't be indebted to any of us. I can't believe, Brother McClintock, that God's bigger than he is. I can't have too much faith, right? I can't be too trusting in my God. God won't won't let that happen. If anything, he rewards that kind of faith. He steps into the situation, right? What did the centurion say? He said, Lord... No need that you need to come to my house. I'm a man under authority, and I know if, if it works for me, it de- you definitely have more authority than that. You can just send, send one of your servants. And God says, or Jesus says, you know, I haven't even seen this kind of faith in Israel. Go, your servants may well. God's looking for that kind of expectation. He's looking for us to wait on him. Amen. Amen. Remember, the battle's not you or I, you're mine. It's, it's God's. It's God's. So sometimes that waiting process can be a little tedious, but maybe we're waiting in the wrong way. Maybe our wait is the elevator wait. Okay, God, I'm just waiting. But I'm not doing anything. I'm not expecting anything. I'm just waiting. I'm doing nothing. But these people that wait upon the Lord... You, they don't just sit and do nothing. They're actually seeking for the Lord to act, ready for when he does. They're doing the prayer. They're, they're seeking after, after counsel. They're doing all these things, and they're not expecting it necessarily in their time frame, but they're waiting for when God, in God's time frame, it will come. Amen. Amen. So if you feel like maybe there's a, some strength that could be renewed, think about that. Meditate on that. It will help. Amen. Okay, but I want to talk about a little more on a practical level. If you guys know me very well at all, I am, I am more the, uh, I'm more the guy that looks into everything, the spiritual meaning. You know, I'm gonna, God, what are you trying to say? What are you trying to say? My wife is the practical one. She's like, let's just pay the bills, Sean. <laughs> so, but I, I did get on a practical level because I think there needs to be a balance, balance of both. Number one, three ways that we can wait upon the Lord for our strength to be renewed. Number one, what happens when you need, when you need strength back again and you've been weak? You got to eat. First one, food. That's our first thing. Wow, that's pretty deep. When I need strength, I need food. Well, Brother Sean, how does that tie in? To what you're talking about. John chapter 6, verse 54 and 58. It's not on the screen, but I'm going to read it to you. It says, whoever, and this is Jesus talking to his disciples, talking about the bread of life. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. I will raise him up at the last day, for my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and in him. Now, I'm going to interject for just a second. Yes, we believe, you know, I, I do believe this is talking about partaking of communion, you know, that, that um, celebrating the Lord's death. But me partaking of, uh, of communion and you partaking of communion does not mean that he abides in me or in you. There's a deeper meaning here, Right? He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. Jesus said earlier, he who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. Well, how does that work? Maybe us partaking of that 
eating of the Lord's flesh and drinking of the Lord's blood is the gospel in a nutshell, death, burial, and resurrection in us. For if Jesus is ab- if for him to abide in me, I have to have the spirit. Right? So verse 57 says, as the living father sent me and I live because of the father, so he who feeds on me will live because of me. 58, this is the bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers ate man and are dead. Jesus right there is trying to say, I'm not talking about the physical. He who eats this bread will live forever. So what are you trying to say, Brother Sean? I'm saying when you're feeling that, that, that strength is depleted, Lord, I'm feeling weary. I'm feeling worn thin. I need you. God's saying, come and eat. Me and you. In the room, Sean, nobody else. Come and eat. Drink of my living water. We need to get that, pre- that, that spirit of the Lord, just get renewed in the spirit again. Eat and be filled, right? I know it sounds so simple, but why don't we do that? We look, we look for everything else. I've been guilty. Lord, uh, well, well, maybe I'm doing this right or wrong, or maybe I need to switch this around. And God's just saying, just come and eat. Just come into your room with just me and you, and let's spend some intimate time again and be filled. Amen. You know, you think about it. the The physical parallels the spiritual in so many ways. God, I think, does that so it's easier for us, right? He says when we're when we're when you and I are recovering from sickness or malnourishment, the first thing that comes to mind, what, what do we do, right? When we're sick, what is a, a test of how good or how bad somebody's feeling? Well, can they keep any food down? First thing, food. That's, that's, that's the same thing in the spirit. God, how am I doing? Do I need to get some food in me? Do I need to get some of your spirit, more of your spirit in me today? I don't feel like I need to. I don't, I don't feel like I, I should, I rather should. I, I, I'll say, but the first thing that comes to mind is eating, getting food in us, how we replenish that strength. Amen. Just as our bodies need to ingest to renew that physical strength, so our spirits need to ingest to renew our spiritual strength. I know it's pretty fundamental or pretty elementary rather, but it's so true. Matthew eleven twenty eight says, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden. Pastor talked about this Sunday and I will give you rest. Man, heavy laden, laboring. That doesn't sound like somebody that's doing super, Superman in the spirit. So just come to the Lord. If you feel like, man, God, I just feel stressed out, burnt out. <laughs> I need you. That's okay. You know, I, I know I'm not even going to do it because I know the, you guys know the answer as well as I do. Everybody that had to eat this morning in this room would be 100%. Or, or you could, if you say, well, Brother Sean, I don't eat breakfast. Okay. Last month, how many have eaten? Well, all of us. It's the same spiritually. I can't go along without the food, the spiritual food that I need. Amen. Our spirit eats by being in the presence of Jesus Christ. That's how we eat. I need to ingest the Holy Ghost again and again. Because I grow weak and weary in my spirit when I rely on yesterday's miracles. Amen? How many, how many have had, now I'm not, I know there are times when we have landmarks in our walk with God. We need those. We need those powerful moves of God in our life that we can look back to and say, God, you moved there. But that's not, ju- God doesn't just want it to be the Red Sea, right? Where we always refer to the Red Sea. He also wants to point us to the next promise. There's a new covenant coming, Right? The branch of righteousness, Sean. So he wants, he, he wants us to look back, but that to, to get us to look forward to the next one, right? And to pursue that. Amen. I know I'm beating a dead horse, so I'm going to move on. First Samuel chapter 30. I do believe this is on the screen. This is a, another pretty uh, well-known passage about somebody that decided to eat when they really needed to. So David and his men came to the city. And there it was, burned with fire. Their wives, their sons, and their daughters had been taken captive. Then David and the people who were with him lifted up their voices and wept until they had no more power or strength 
to weep. It's pretty depleted. David's two wives, Ahinoam, the Jezreelitess, and Abigail, the widow of Nabal, the Carmelite, had been taken captive. But 36 is the one we hold on to. Now David was greatly distressed, for the people spoke of stoning him. Now, I, I, if you're like me, there's occasionally the time when things are going crazy in your life, or you feel, man, I just don't feel as connected as I want to. You talk to a friend, which is a good thing, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. But David didn't have that option. <laughs> he had no option. You know, um, Joab, they're thinking about stoning me, and Joab's thinking, I'm actually part of that crowd. You know, you can't talk to me about this, David. Okay. So why did they think about stoning him? Because the soul of every pe- all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and daughters. But David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. How? Think about that. How? No priest, no pastor, no choir. All your friends aren't on your side. He doesn't have the Ark of the Covenant. He doesn't. He he strengthened himself by eating from God's presence. Now, I know you're you're thinking, well, Brother Sean, it doesn't say that. But how else? What happens when you get in a situation when everybody's against you? David, David found his strength in the Lord by prayer, by spending time with the only one that was on his side. Amen. So he decided to eat. He took, he took that food, and it gave him strength. Amen. That's our first option. Our second option I just referred to, but it was not an option for David, is friendship. Friendship is another, our, our second way we can get Renewed in our strength spiritually. Now, you're, I'm going to talk about it. Ecclesiastes verse, uh, chapter 4, 9 through 10 says, Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, the one will lift up his companion. But woe to him that is alone when he falls, for he has no one to help him up. Amen. Just as people that are recovering from injury, surgery, sickness maybe. Sometimes we need someone there to kind of do the heavy lifting, right? When I, was, when I was out with the fever and I was down for the count, man, I was not the one vacuuming, I'm telling you. <laughs> I was not the one. I wasn't even making my own food. My wonderful wife was, was, t- was taking care of those basic needs, right? The things that I could do under normal circumstances, I wouldn't need her help for. But when I'm depleted, when I'm weakened, I need that, that companion there. If isolating ourselves from the body of Christ is spiritual suicide, and it is, then spending more and more time with the family of God leads to spiritual health and strength. Right? They're reciprocal parts of the same equation. Isolation, suicide. Companionship, health and life. So, and I, I, know, I know that, Brother Reedy, I love you. You're my brother-in-law. But I know you can't be God in my life. But there are times that I have been able to talk to you and you have imparted strength whether you knew it or not. And God used you. And that can happen for all of us. And we need that. That's how the body ministers one to another. Right? Right? It's amazing, the human body. I was talking to my wife about this. The human body, uh, I'll, I'll tell you the background of the story. Evelyn, bless her heart, fell yesterday, busted her lip. Um, bottom teeth kind of went a little into the upper lip, not too bad. Mama, of course, call the doctor. Call the doctor. Daddy, uh, I, I, I got to be honest. I was kind of like, uh, she's okay. <laughs> you know, I, I, I love her, but, but there's a balance, right? But the point is, I, I thought it came to me, and I was telling Rachel, I was like, but you know what, though? It's not into her upper lip. It'll be okay. God made this body to heal itself to a degree. It's so true, even in the spiritual sense. God made this body to be able to heal itself. Now, through his spirit, all through God, it's not of us or, or, and of ourselves, But God made this body to minister to one another, to help each other heal. 
So we need to take advantage of that. That's our second option, right? I need that friendship. I need that companionship. Because I've been, I've been there, y'all, where the prayers, I was doing the prayer, I was doing the Bible reading, I was doing the fasting, and nothing was going on. I was like, God, I'm looking for the answer. I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. But God used somebody else in the church to get through, to get through the barrier. And he taught me something that day. He said, you just remember, this isn't just, this isn't just about me and you. It's about me, you, and your family. Amen. Amen. I know I've been, I don't know about you, but I've been, there's been times where I've actually just been hanging out with friends in the church, just having some godly fellowship, just talking. Uh, but somebody just says something, you know, not, not, maybe, maybe they, maybe they brought up a situation uh, where God was doing in their lives or something, but it was something so simple and it ministered to me. Just gave me a little bit of hope. An oasis in a dry place. How many have been there? And that person may not even have known it, but it was just enough. And God was, God was working. God was working. Don't ever underestimate how much God is doing behind the scenes. We always want to say, well, God, where are you? Because we want the lightning to fall. We want the fire to fall from heaven. We want to see the miracles, the signs, the wonders. But God's always working. It just said he never faints nor sleeps, nor grows weary. He's always working behind the scenes, so always trust. That's why we can wait upon the Lord. We can wait with assurance that, God, you're doing something. It's not made itself known yet. I have not beheld it yet, but I know you're moving for my, my good, my benefit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know you're on my side, Jesus. Amen. I need my brothers and my sisters. I need you all. I want to let you know that. I don't always tell you that. But I need you. I need your prayers. I need to share my burdens with you. And you need to do the same. We need to pray for one another and confess our faults one to another, right? James 5, 16. Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. So if I don't confess those faults, if I don't, and I don't allow somebody to pray for me, I may not get the healing that I need. Right? The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man, not a perfect man, a righteous man, avails much. If it said a perfect man, well, then we can all check that off. It says a righteous man. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank the Lord. And finally, so we've talked about food. Food's our first option. Get into the presence of Jesus Christ. Eat and be filled. Friendship. Talk to, fellowship with your brothers and sisters. Connect with the body. Talk with them. Let, let, let it be godly fellowship. You know, the difference, with, I was thinking about this the other day. What makes godly fellowship godly fellowship? Well, you could say, well, it's being with the people of God. I, I agree with that to an extent. You know, it could be, well, there's, it's, a, it's a moral setting. Yeah, but you can have a, a fairly moral setting at other places. You know, business meeting at work. <laughs> it's, you're not doing anything immoral there, most likely. But the point is, godly fellowship is when God's involved, right? Now, it could be something simple. It could be somebody giving cookies freely. Well, I don't have to pay for these? Okay. Somebody's just sharing food. Somebody's sharing the hospitality. But sometimes it's also God saying, just bring me up in the conversation, Sean. Just bring me up. Let me be part of that delightful time, right? You know, it doesn't always have to be just talking about football or talking about um, how the, the, the president's doing or how the po- politics of the day are, but maybe just what, God, what God's doing. Amen. Amen. Okay. Um, third one is follow. Food, friendship, follow. Yes, I did pull a brother, Wayne Huntley. <laughs> I, uh, you know, this one kind of can be the hardest one. When I'm weak, when I find myself needing needing a renewal in my strength, I need need that food, I need that friendship, and I need to follow. Follow what? Well, we're going to talk about that. James 5.14 says, 
Is any among you sick? <laughs> Come on, I'm preaching to us, y'all, right now. <laughs> Is any among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. But the key part there is elders, leaders, pastors, ministers. Call for them. Okay? You know, you, once again, I, I'm paralleling the physical with the spiritual because it's so applicable. If an individual was to in, endure some horrific injury, something that was debilitating, uh, labeled as physical trauma, that person would probably, most, most often, would need to seek out a certain person. Anybody got an idea? Physical therapist. Rehabilitation is needed for some of the most um, some of the most debilitating situations, right? You see this all the time, especially with uh, professional athletes, people that are involved in car accidents. Um, spiritually, sometimes something comes along and it feels like that. It's a train wreck and you are in the middle of it. You need rehab. Physical therapy was, is defined by Wikipedia, is carried out, uh, I'm sorry, is, quote, carried out by a physical therapist and or physical therapist assistants, unquote. Professionals, it's carried out by professionals who have devoted their life study, their efforts to understanding human anatomy, how to re-strengthen muscles after tissue's been affected or damaged. They, they, they excel in this because that's what they have put their life to. That has been their focus, right? To return that body to as much of a normal state as possible, right? Well, thank the Lord that there is a spiritual parallel here. First of all, God can heal from anything, amen? There is no limit to the healing power of Jesus Christ, amen? Amen. But at the same time, God doesn't always do it like we want it, right? Lightning doesn't always fall. Sometimes God is saying, go get the man of God. So, we need to also go to those who have dedicated their lives to studying, to the studying of God's word, the working of the spirit, that we might have that renewing of strength, right? When we grow weary, receiving counsel from our pastor, from, from ministers like Brother Hughes. I love it that pastor allows Dr. Hughes to come in. And how many have been blessed by the ministry of his counsel? Many times. And his preaching, and, 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 and there's other, um, other ministers here. I know Brother Tuttle's been used in, in a lot of uh, things overseas. I mean, that, but those elders, those ministers, those men and women of God that I know have a walk with God, I can talk to them, I can trust in them. And if I'm dealing with something and I'm feeling weak, I need to go and, and, and follow what they say, even when it's something I don't necessarily like. Right? I need to allow them to pray for me. Humble myself. Admit that I need it. Right? Now, I'm not saying, I'm not saying it, that this should, all, this should be just, you know, I, I got a hangnail, Pastor. Pray. Pray. You know? But I am saying there are times God wants you to go to the ministry. He wants you to go. The worst thing you can do is delay that healing by staying away. Get your pastor involved. I'm thankful we have a wonderful pastor. Amen. And I know, I know we have wonderful ministers in this church that I know they would be there for me if I really needed them. It may be, it may be a counseling session. It may be some, just a, some good advice. And it may be some prayer. But they, I need that spiritual therapy every once in a while. You do too. We all do especially in those times that are very traumatic. When a sheep cannot adequately feed itself or function within the flock normally, only a shepherd can be the difference between life and death. Wow. I feel the Holy Ghost. Jesus Christ is the true shepherd, yes. He's the one that helps and guides our pastor so that our pastor can shepherd us. He has ordained our pastor. And our pastor, through the Spirit, can minister to us in those times. 
and bring that strength, renewing that strength back to where we can operate as God wants us to be, those healthy uh, Christians, those healthy ministers for his gospel. I'll tell you where Jesus commands one of these ministers to do this. Luke 22, verse 31, 32 says, And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, indeed Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. Now, I would think we would all unanimously agree that in the early, early church, Peter was probably... I know they were him, he was equal with the apostles, but he was the spokesman. If, if there was a general superintendent, it was Peter at this time. And when you have returned to me, he's still talking to Peter. What does he say? Strengthen your brethren. So God has called our pastor. He's called our, uh, the ministers in this church, the elders, to strengthen the brethren. Let them help you. I can't grow strong again without all three of these efforts in my life. God wants to renew your strength today. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's been a very tumultuous season. Maybe it's been okay. Maybe the load on you is really light. Either way, these principles, we need these. I'm going to need them now or I'm going to need them soon. God knows that you may feel worn thin today. Weary from life, business, stress, and just all of Jesus you can today. Amen? If you, if you need strength, why don't you just reach out to Jesus? Let him fill you up again. Join together with your brothers and sisters. Have that godly fellowship. Sometimes you actually have to make it happen. Okay? I'm a socialite. I love I love my time with my family. I'm talking about you, not just Rachel and Evelyn, you. But I got to carve it out now because I've got a little one. I got to make it happen. And talk to your leaders. Talk to your pastor. Talk to, talk to the ministers at this church. Let them help you renew that strength, give you the guidance and wisdom that you need. Hallelujah. I'm thankful. I don't know about you, but I'm thankful that Jesus Christ is in all of it. He's in all of it. It's not just me, bro, Brother Reedy. It's not just pastor. It's, it's God through us all. He's all in all. Hallelujah. Let's stand today. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Once again, we're not talking about re building up strength. We're talking about re being renewed in our strength. You can't be renewed in your strength by taking on more responsibility. Saying, Lord, well, maybe I need to... Maybe I need to go preach a sermon or something. Maybe I need to, you know, get involved more in this area or that area. That's just busy work, y'all. We can call it like it is. It's just busy work. It's ignoring the real issue. Another job, a new relationship, a new degree. It only comes from Jesus. Amen? It only comes from Jesus. Let's pray today. Thank you, Jesus, for this day, Father. Thank you for your love and mercy, Jesus. Thank you for your word, God, that is forever settled in heaven. Jesus, just as recovering in the physical world, let us also, God, recover the same way in the spiritual world by, by the food, God, that by being in your presence, Jesus. Lord, help us, Jesus, to connect with our brothers in friendship and build each other up, Lord. And I pray, Lord, let us include our pastors and our leaders in, our, in what's going on with life's trials, Lord. I pray in Jesus' name, bring healing, God, and renew our strength today, that, Lord, we could be a strong, mighty army for you, Jesus, in this city, Lord. I pray renew our strength in your spirit today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You are good. You are good at all times. You know exactly where your people are. In Jesus' name, I pray renew our strength today, Father. Hallelujah, hallelujah, in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless you. We're going to break before the second session.